Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo. Of course if you forgot who I am, I know it's been a few weeks for those of you guys following, but uh, I, of course I'm Professor Mohan and uh, you know the last few weeks was a little tricky, I got sick, but that's okay, you know I got the right antibiotics, I got the right medications, I'm back in action. Now today we're going to try something a little different actually to be honest, we're having a little technical difficulties, the lighting is off. Uh, uh, the stand is not here, so we're gonna try something different with the selfie stick. But nonetheless, I'm gonna make sure you guys get a nice, proper, thorough lecture. So today's topic is MEN syndrome, the men syndromes, multiple endocrine neoplasias. So it's a great topic to have today because it's a it's a simple topic. All we're doing is kind of wrapping everything up. So let me flip the camera around. So the men syndromes. Now oh, you're gonna ask yourself, do they only occur in these men? It is not a something that occurs in just men. It occurs in men, it occurs in women. And the only thing that's common about these men's syndromes is that they're autosomal dominant. So, you know, a lot of men like to think they're dominant. Does this guy, does this guy look like he's dominant? How about this guy over here? Well, it doesn't matter. We're not answering those kind of questions. But all you have to remember is genetic inheritance is autosomal dominant. Do not forget that. That's actually very, very important when we learn about genetics and we learn about the pedigrees. Good to know which ones are autosomal recessive, which ones are autosomal dominant. So with these men's syndromes, you know, yeah, you know, you've been studying it a lot of times, you see all these patterns, and then of course, we always forget, what are the patterns? Anyways, we've got men type one, men type 2A, and men type 2B. So what do you have to remember? You have to remember these rules of how many, uh, how many syndromes or how many tumors start with the letter P, which, uh, which tumors have a specific gene mutation, and that way just keep it all together. So let's start from the top, the men one syndromes. There's three tumors in there that start with the letter P, so we say three Ps. Now the MEN1 gene is affected in the MEN1 syndrome, and that MEN1 gene is also referred to as MENIN. So very, very simple. MENIN looks like MEN1, there you go. What are the three Ps? Parathyroid tumors. Now guys, this is all review because we've done this in all of the lectures before, and if you forgot, click on the links below. We talked about the parathyroid tumors already. Increases parathyroid hormone, PTH. That'll increase calcium and decrease phosphate. That's why we call the parathyroid hormone the phosphate trashing hormone. The second thing, the pituitary tumors. Guys, again, we've done all of this before. This, is, this was like the first or second lecture, the prolactinomas, the acromegaly. Prolactinomas, the patient's gonna describe having increased prolactin, acromegalies, they're gonna say lots of growth hormone is seen after you do the glucose suppression test. So very, very key. Pancreatic tumors, there's a few of them, but definitely want to keep pay attention to this one over here. The Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Now, we haven't talked about that, and we're saving that for the gastrointestinal lectures. However, what I can tell you about this, gastrin is increased. Gastrin, what does that do? It stimulates hydrochloric acid. So the patient's going to have a lot of acid in their stomach, in their duodenum. So the patient's going to have recurrent ulcers. Insulinomas. Guys, we just did this the other day. Increase in insulin, decrease in glucose. And of course, since this is a tumor, it's gonna have increase in C-peptide. Why do we care about C-peptide levels? Because exogenous insulin, when a nurse or a health practitioner or a caregiver is taking insulin shots, of course they'll have low glucose. But it's not real insulin, it's insulin from outside, exogenous insulin. That's why C-peptide levels will not be increased. We got the VIPomas that we're gonna discuss again when we get into the GI lectures, and the glucagonomas, which you need to know is quite rare compared to the first few. The second one, men type 2A. We have two Ps. Now, this is the only tricky thing. Again, it's not even tricky. You just gotta remember the parathyroid tumors come down, and instead of a tumor this time, it's a parathyroid hyperplasia. That means all four glands, they're probably increasing in size, increasing growth. Another P that we had this time is a pheochromocytomas. Again, we just did this a few weeks ago. We got increase in catecholamines. What are those catecholamines? Of course, not norepinephrine, epinephrine. And click on the link below, guys. You guys will get all of the all the rules. Remember the 10% rules. Remember the rules of peace. Just remember all that stuff. The pulsatine headaches, the pain. Guys, go back and read it. It's so simple. Next thing you want to add to this is a medullary thyroid carcinoma. The medullary thyroid carcinoma. Guys, we did this again. This is all repeat. You guys should be teaching me. Anyways, increase in calcitonin leads to a decrease in calcium. Key thing you want to remember comes from the parafollicular C cells. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now we got that. Now this one, as well as men to be, as you can see over here, it's associated with the morphinoid habitus. What does that mean? Patient's gonna present with lanky, skinny, elongated arms, and all the other signs and symptoms of Marfan syndrome. And 
Of course, like we said, pay attention to this over here, the mutation in the ret gene. Now let's go down to MEN2B, which only has one letter P. So what happens over here? The pheochromocytomas get carried down over here, the pheochromocytomas only from the letter P. But the medullary thyroid carcinomas also get carried down. The medullary thyroid carcinomas get carried down as well. So already half of your work is done. The only other thing you gotta remember is, of course we remember that there's a mutation in the ret gene again, just like in MEN2A. What else do you have to remember? Mucosal neuromas this time. That's the only new addition, the oral and intestinal ganglioneuromatosis. So keep that in mind. And again, just like in MEN2A, MEN2B is also associated with morphinoid habitus. So that's it guys, that's it. I just flipped the camera around just to tell you guys that was it, man. That was a simple lecture. You know, this, uh, I'm so close to the camera, I'm sure you can see all my wrinkles and my uh, eyelids are all dark and usually with the other lighting, all that's covered. But that's nonetheless, it's all right, it's all good. Next week we'll have it all sorted out for you. But anyways, what are we gonna do next week? Next week we're gonna talk about diabetes. Finally, diabetes, the last and final topic in the endocrine section. So those of you sticking around with me, you know that's awesome, thank you for the support. The rest of you guys, get on that, subscribe, share the video with your friends, definitely like the videos and comment on the sections below. And we'll see you next week on Med School Mondays with Promo.